All right, let's take a look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Okay, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Yes. Wow. That's uh, yeah. that's quite a quite a statement there. Now let's talk. About, who, who's the speaker there? Paul, the apostle Paul, and who's he talking to? The church. And basically, he's talking to a church in Corinth, uh, and these people are sinning. Correct. He's rebuking them and chastising them over some sin, right? Correct. So the first word really strikes me is he says, "What? Like, what? I'm shocked." Don't you get it? And then he says what? For you are bought. You're bought. With a uh, price. With a price. They, the members of that church, and you and I, we were bought with a... What was the price? How did we get bought? The blood of Christ. I mean, when I purchase a gift for you, who purchases the gift? The receiver or the giver? The giver. The giver purchases it. That would be Jesus Christ. He gives us the gift of eternal life, the gift of salvation, uh, and he purchased it with his own blood. Uh, and as a matter of fact, that's what it says next, right? With the wages of sin is death. And he said, You are not your own, you're purchased with a price. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ, right? We don't even belong to ourselves anymore. He owns us. That gets back to the thing we were discussing earlier about the eternal security. You, you can't get out of this even if you wanted to, people, because you are bought with a price. You are not your own anymore. And these are believers here. Yes, they're and believers. They're, they're still in sin. They get caught up in some kind of a sin, so Paul's just shocked. What? Don't you know you are on not your own? You are bought with a price. And, and then he says, what to them? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Wow. So he's, he's telling them, uh, basically, look, your, uh, you, your body is not your own anymore. Your spirit is the spirit of God living inside you. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit. Your, so maybe they were into some kind of sins that involved their bodies. Like what? Like well, the, the verse above it talks about <coughs> flee fornication. Okay. And, and, the, and the, the verse after it says, Now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Okay, uh, sounds like they were involved in fornication, promiscuity, maybe adultery, that kind of a thing, uh, fleshly sins. <coughs> and and uh, so he's telling them, glorify God with your body. Don't commit sin. And, and you know, it's... The, the Holy Spirit lived inside these people, and yet they're fornicating. In a way, they're dragging the Holy Spirit right through this fornication with them. Because wherever we go, whatever we do, the Holy Spirit's with us. So then, what? let's see what happens in the next verse we're going to get to. Okay, let's go to... Uh, he, uh, um, uh, let's go to Ephesians 4.30 now. Ephesians 4.30. <laughs> And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Wow. Another great verse to tell us that we cannot lose our salvation. Uh, we, the whole, we're sealed, sealed with the Holy Spirit of God came inside us and lives inside us and will never leave us. Sealed inside us. Uh, but it's telling us, don't grieve the Spirit. Since the Holy Spirit of God is living inside me, uh, when I sin, the Spirit of God is going through grief. <laughs> I'm breaking the heart of God if, when I sin. And it's saying, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Okay. So a Christian, after he gets saved, he can sin and grieve the Holy Spirit. Yes. matter of fact, I think that is a very good test 
for Christians. Uh, we were talking earlier about the prodigal son. Uh, he went off and, 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 and got into sin and he came back. He, he never stopped being the son. He was still Christian. Uh, but uh, he got involved in sin. But he felt grief. He felt remorse. He felt shame over what he'd done. And, and that caused him to come back and repent and, and ask for this relationship back with his father. It's the same thing that every Christian should ask themselves. If they're involved in sin and if they don't feel any guilt and shame over it, if the spirit living inside them is, is not grieved, something must be wrong there. I mean, I've, uh, I know personally, uh, in my lifetime, I grieved the Holy Spirit and it's, it's horrible it, to, to feel that kind of guilt and I've wept over it. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking because I'm breaking God's heart and my heart breaks too. And I, I think any Christian that has the Holy Spirit inside them has gone through that. Yeah, absolutely. Um. All right, so if you say you're a Christian and you're uh, doing sinful things and, and you don't even feel any guilt or shame or remorse over it, uh, I would just ask you to, to really uh, look inside because uh, maybe there is no Holy Spirit in you. Maybe you never really uh, trusted Jesus and received the Holy Spirit. Something to think about.